third game. They're 2 0 after two games. Five pool games to play this week, Tuesday through Friday, to determine who gets to advance to the playoffs this weekend with the ultimate champion playing at Texas Christian University Ballpark. So the bottom of the, or top of the first, Landon Longsworth toes the rubber as the starting pitcher for the Dallas Tigers. Cole Solomon completes the battery behind the plate. And he leads him off with strike one. Blue and powder blue today. First ba baseman for Dallas Tigers is Ryland King. Second base is Jake Carter. Shortstop is Chaz Peterson. And third base, Connor Lynch. Tate Trueblood is your right fielder with Ty Manning in center field. And Brent McMahon. McMahon in left field. Tries to get him to bite on a high fastball, but that's ball one, bringing the count to one and two on the leadoff batter for the Midwest Elite. Again, he goes with the high fastball, brings the count to two two. Hebron Hawks ball field here has 318 to the corner in right field, 318 to the corner in left field, 396 straight away center. Tries the curveball on the outside corner, just misses. Loads the count. Lead off batter. Comes straight away with a fastball. Ball up and back. Looks like it's out of play, and it is. Right into the first row of the stands. to the broadcast, Paul Ernest from the Four Seasons. Miss you here in the booth today. We're up about 12 rows, top row, just behind home plate on the third base side of the dugout. And a swing and a miss for strike three. So it's a great at bat for the leadoff, but it results in a swinging K for the first out of the game. Took it a full count, fouled off the first payoff pitch. Wasn't able to make contact on the second payoff pitch. Brings up the second batter of the inning, number 36 for the Midwest Elite. He leads him off with the ball in the dirt for ball one. Landon Longsworth, hard throwing, five foot eleven, about a buck forty soaking wet. Getting some looks from quite a few schools over the last few weeks. This is fastballs right around that 9-0 mark when he's throwing hardest. That's outside and low for ball two. 2-0 two the count to the batter. Swing and a miss on an off-speed pitch. Looked like a changeup down and in. Again, our outfield consists of Brenton McNamara in left, Ty Manning in center, and Tate Trueblood in right field. Down low in the zone, 3-1 is the count. Connor Lynch at third base, Chaz Peterson at short, Jake Carter at second, Ryland King at first base. 3-1 pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Full count. Both the leadoff and the two-hole batter brought the count in full. In this case, pitcher had to battle back to get there. Payoff pitch. And it's through the zone and swung on a miss for strikeout number two of the inning. And Longsworth brought the speed that time, and the batter just couldn't catch up with it. Brings up the three-hole hitter with two outs, no men on, number seven up the bat. Right on the border of Plano and Carrollton, Texas, the Hebron Hawks, 6A school here in North Texas. Ooh, and he starts him off with a curveball for strike one. Hard throw down low, ball one. One ball, one strike, two outs, no men on. 
very, very slight breeze today, blowing in from right field. Don't think we'll uh, see any balls dramatically affected by the wind. Down and out again for ball two. Hitters count here. Two balls, one strike. Makes it 3-1 for the second straight batter. Landon having a little trouble finding that outside corner. Trying to be careful. Big batter up here. Definitely a power hitter. Let that one get away from him. High fastball. But that's just so often the case. Batter swings and a miss. Bringing the count to full for the third straight batter of the inning. Had three payoff pitches, two swing and a miss, and a foul ball. Let's see where we go here with this payoff pitch. And it's a line shot just past second baseman, diving. Jake Carter can't make the play. Ball makes its way out to Ty Manning, who relays the throw in for the first hit of the game. Bringing up the cleanup hitter, number 17. Two outs, man on first. So Landon Longworth will work from the stretch for the first time in the game. Minor lead at first base. Landon does a little bit of landscape work on the mound. Digs in. Goes to the plate for ball one. Two and a half steps and a play over to third first base. No real play, dives in plenty of time. Ryland King reaching to his left to easily make the catch, but no tag applied. And the pitch and a swing, it's a high fly ball to Tate Trueblood, could be short. Diving catch, da da da! Tate Trueblood comes up with it and catches his hat on the rebound. For the third out of the inning. And that'll take us to the bottom of the first. We'll stay with you in between innings today, as long as the heat factor doesn't get to us. Way to go, two four. Scouts in the audience today from various junior colleges, peers. A couple events going on in the area. It's uh, got scouts down here for the entire summer, really. Um, the Dallas Tigers have been playing in front of college coaches every weekend for the past eight weekends. Next weekend, they'll be down in Waco playing in front of the Baylor crew as well as many of the colleges in the Waco area. Several prospects on the team, and many that have uh, generated quite a bit of interest. Not the least of which is your leadoff hitter, Ty Manning, center fielder, known for those types of plays that you saw Tate Trueblood make. He'll be leading off number two, with Chaz Peterson on deck. Chaz Peterson, your utility infielder, can play really any position in the infield other than first. Also plays a little bit of outfield. Ty Manning, starting second baseman all last year on the Coppell Cowboys baseball team. Went three deep in the playoffs. Has a knack for getting on base. And once on base, drives opposing pitchers and their entire defense crazy. Here we, go. Here we, go. we like to say he just gets on and then he just scores. So no score going to the bottom of the first. Time Manning up to bat. Tigers coaches at first and third taking their positions. And he starts him off with a fastball down the middle for strike one. Good leadoff hitter. I'm going to see a couple pitches here. Out 
outside ball one. Later in the game, Ty Manning will be a more aggressive batter, but early on, he knows his job is to show us as many pitches as this pitcher has. And he rips this one into right center. It's a great hit. Center field arranging over to make the stop and hold the runner at one. So we'll get to see and have an opportunity here to see that stress that uh, Time Manning can put on a pitcher and an entire defense. Chaz Peterson now up. Chaz the shortstop in today's game. Cole Solomon on deck, your catcher for today's game. He's got a modest lead at first. He'll gauge him a little bit. Chaz Peterson squares to Bond, pulls it back, but he gets the called strike for strike one. Umpire said he went? Yeah. Correction, so he's saying he went, even though he pulled his bat back for strike one. A swing and a foul tip for strike two. So right away, Chaz Peterson behind in the count, 0-2. Kind of a strange first call. Chaz Peterson clearly called the ball, the, pulled the bat back on that bunt attempt. Ball was high, but blue called the strike. I thought he was calling in his own. Later signaled that he went. And the curve ball, Chaz Peterson defensively hacks it down. Um, ball gets away from the first baseman, but calmly picks up and throws to second base. Not a good throw, but a wonderful pick by the shortstop to get the lead runner. Ty Manning really had no chance there. He, uh, first baseman should have had the ball easy in the air, standing very close to the bag, so Ty had to stay on the bag. First baseman ranging back about three or four feet behind the bag. Ball hits his heel of his glove, pops behind him. He had plenty of time to pick up the ball and throw it to second base. As I said, wasn't a great throw, but shortstop saved him with a good pick. Brings up Cole Solomon batting from the left side of the base. And swing and a deep shot to left field. Left field arranging is underneath. That'll send Chaz Peterson back to first base with two outs. And it'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Ryland King, number 15. Ryland playing first base today. Jake Carter, your second baseman, on deck. So aggressive first swing by Cole Solomon. Gets a ball in the zone. Hits it hard, but unfortunately it ends up to be about a 300-foot out. Chaz Peterson on the move, swing, and a foul ball back to the screen. That'll send the runner back to first base. Tigers like to be aggressive, especially with two outs. Try and get this runner in scoring position with their cleanup hitter at the plate. Down, out of the zone for ball one. One ball, one strike to the batter. Comes at him with a curveball that misses down and out. Squirts away from the catcher, but not enough for Chaz Peterson to make the move. Who's already walking back to second base or first base. So that makes it count 2-1. Ryland King at the plate. Two outs, man on first, bottom of the first inning. A couple late arriving fans just joining us. From the stretch and the move to the plate, and it's down and dirty. Chaz Peterson making the move, and he's beat badly on the throw. Slide came up a little bit short. He had to swim move, and by that time, the tag was on him. Great throw by the catcher. Chaz appeared to get a pretty good jump there, but uh, just a great pitch, great throw down to second. No chance for the stolen base. But that'll keep Ryan King's bat alive, and he'll be the leadoff as we go to the bottom of the second. But for now, we'll be taking it to the top of the second as the Tigers take the field. Check for any defensive changes, but there are none. Lennon Longsworth stays at the mound, and uh, Ryland King remains at first base. First base ends up being a position where we see a significant amount of switching by the uh, Tigers, as are really all the positions. Coach Bankston preferring to get players playing time in most games. Very seldom do we have somebody sit on the bench for the entire game. Exception to that might be for a player who pitched the last game or who's pitching the next game, especially in this kind of heat. But for now, we'll stay with the starting lineup. Kate Trueblood right field, Ty Manning left field, Brenton McMahon in left. Ryan King at first, 
Jake Carter at second. Chaz Peterson at shortstop. Connor Lynch at third. Brandon Longsworth at the mound. And Cole Solomon behind the plate. Four up and four, or three down for the uh, Midwest Elite in their first inning as they stranded one runner. So this is the five-hole batter up for his first time at bat. Tigers actually went down in order technically. With Ty Manning reaching on a base hit, then forced out at second on a fielder's choice. count immediately uh, as the leadoff hitter of the inning gets well ahead on the count. And Longsworth struggled with the mound to get quick outs, although retiring three and four batters. He did go to a full count on each of them. In this case, it's four straight pitch walk to start off the second inning. Worth took a couple of innings in his last outing to settle down, but did so well. We expect him to start finding the zone and the slot soon. But for now, he'll throw the rubber in the uh, stretch position. Line drive right up the middle. That's going to be a single to Ty Manning. Put a man at first and second. No play there. Longsworth made a stab at it. Nothing he could do. Mound visit by Cameron Bankston. Set the defense, calm the pitcher, get everybody on the same page here. As scoring opportunity for the Midwest Elite comes up early. First and second, no outs. Bankston will head back to the dugout. Let's we'll see if we can't scratch an out here somehow. Number six at the plate. He is a seven hole batter. Two hits and a walk so far for Midwest Elite. A hit here likely scores a run. Comes into the zone and swing and a miss for strike one. Nice fastball there. Side move, just holding the runner, making sure he knows he sees him. So the 0 1 count, getting the sign, and he has it to the set position. He goes in with a high fastball, swinging a miss for strike two. Well ahead on the count, needs a smart pitch here. Strikeout goes a long way to shortening this inning. Curveball misses just up and inside. Good pitch. If that drops in as a strike, batter had already given up on it. Would have been a called strikeout. Instead, it's a one and two count. No outs, men at first and second. Again, he tries with the curveball. This one gets away from him. Way too high. He'd like to change, change balls. So we have a brief timeout here. Blue offers a new ball to Landon. Two 
2 2 count. Man at first and second. No outs. And it's called third strike. Not sure what number six was looking for there. That was a pretty pitch on the outside corner. Not low at all. He gets the called strikeout. Now you'll see the infield look to turn a double play and get out of the end. Number 14 up at the plate. It's to be a uh, large power hitter, but pretty late in the order. Hopefully uh, one will put a ground ball up the middle here. Inside for ball one. Shortstop and second baseman fainting covering the runner, trying to keep him close. Give the pitcher as many options as he can. Wouldn't be surprised to see a pickoff behind the first base runner at this point. Strike on the outside corner comes hard with the fastball at belt high. One on one to count. Using both the second baseman and the shortstop to distract everybody while Rylan King is about three steps behind the runner at first base. Again, not, would not be surprised to see that pick to first base, although it's a modest lead at best. And the turn and spins, and he calls him out. That's, um, that's an interesting call there. Don't think he really had him, but two or three people in the dugout and the outfield maybe one or two from the stands, all made the call for Blue. Blue reinforced it by ringing him up. So now there's two outs, and the scoring chance that looked so promising with first and second and no outs now dwindles as Landon works to get the third out with a 1-1 count at the batter. That curveball just keeps getting away from Landon. Up high bringing Cole Solomon out of his stance, bringing the count to 2-1. But it's 2-1 with two outs and a man on first. Goes to the plate, down and low, possibly overthrowing a little bit there. Takes the count to 3-1. Don't want to walk a guy after uh, digging yourself out of this particular hole. Force him to put the ball in play. Eight-hole hitter. Shouldn't be able to do any damage to you. Count on your defense to get the out. Soft throw back to first base. And back in plenty of time. Swing and a foul ball off the screen. Brings the count to three balls, two strikes, all full, with two outs. The runner will be moving at first base. Ryland King will release and not hold the runner. Be looking for a ground ball. To the plate, payoff pitch in the dirt for ball four. Hit the plate, bounced up, good block by Cole Solomon. Kept it somewhat in front of him. Kept the runners from advancing further. So we're back to first and second situation, but we do have two outs. I have to be honest with you, their entire lineup looks like power hitters. It's a nine hole. This guy's got to be 240. Looks to be a couple inches taller than Cole Solomon, which would put him a little over six foot, or right at six foot, 230-240. Ryan King plays deep in the first base hole now. To the plate, and it's low for ball one. Low ball two. So Landon real str really struggling here to find the zone. Connor Wilson wants to have a word with him. 
excuse me, Connor Lynch wants to have a word with him from third base. Words of wisdom applied. Landon looks in for the sign. Two balls, no strikes. Be looking to pour down the middle here. Goes to the plate, but it's low again for ball three. So it's a 3 0 count. Walk here loads the bases. Your obligatory strike here and then get him to swing at 3-1 is what your technique is or your goal is now. Inside move just to hold the runner as neither the shortstop nor the second baseman are really in position to do that. Pours it down the middle for strike one. Three balls, one strike. We look to get him swinging here. Like to see the ball put in play. Ground ball gets you out of this inning very quickly. And he comes right down the middle for strike two, bringing the count to full. I've had a lot of full counts so far to date in this game. Let's see if the payoff pitch can get it done here. Looks in for the sign. To the plate, it's low, ball four. That one was a close one. Blue had to hesitate for a second. Catcher had called timeout. We wait until the batter toes the bag at first, and time is given. I have a mound meeting by the team. So we got bases loaded, two outs. Still very easy to get out of here with no damage. But you heard the official scorer say, we need to be working ahead. Something we have not done so far today. Sixth batter of the inning. Comes hard, but misses just outside for ball one. As we've talked about before on the broadcast, if you... Uh, Missed the strike zone quite a bit. Timeout called by uh, Bankston. Ryan Longsworth goes from the windup after getting a little bit of coaching from Bankston. He missed the zone significantly frequently. Umpires are less likely to give you those close pitches. If you're pounding the zone and you're working it around a little bit but staying close to the zone, you get those close calls. Landon's not doing that, so now we're at a 2-0 count. This is low and inside for ball three. You just can't seem to find a spot. It's going to take two pitches to get out of this inning now. As obviously, Midwest Elite's going to be taking this pitch 3-0 count, bases loaded. Would not be surprised to see him taking twice. Pounds in the zone that time. Possibly a little high, but that's a 3-0 strike call that you're going to get all the time. Not taking anything off that fastball like you might think a pitcher would do at a 3-0 count. Throws another one again, right at belt height, maybe just an inch or two above. Fans wanting that to be ball four. But it makes the count full. Bases loaded, two outs. Runners will be going, and they do. And a swing and a ground ball right at the shortstop, Chaz Peterson, who throws to first. Rowling King makes a tag, and the Tigers escape with no runs. On one hit, no errors, lots of walks. The Tigers will be batting in the bottom of the second. When we return, we will be taking a break and we'll be right back.
Oh, bottom of the second. Ryland King gets a new at bat here. Ball one taken. Second pitch fouled off over the screen, and that's ball two taken. Ball three goes all the way to the screen after bouncing right in front of the plate. Makes the count 3-1. So the Tigers give up a lot of base runners in that last inning, but end up stranding three and no runner score. Tigers still tied 0-0 in the bottom of the second. A swing and a foul ball pulled down toward third base. Makes the count full. Breeze is stiffening here at uh, Hebron Hawks ballpark. Seems to be shifting a little bit. And it's a hard shot right up the middle. Pitcher defensively dodges the ball and Ryan King standing at first base having brought the center fielder into the action. Brings up Jake Carter, batting from the left side of the plate. Connor Lynch on deck. Jake Carter, another very versatile player on the Dallas Tigers. Playing second base today. Plays the entire infield, plays outfield. Hitting well, hence the five-hole spot. Ryan King, no... Uh, much of a primary lead, but a good secondary. Swing and a miss by Jake Carter. And Ryan King stretches the lead just slightly, trying to get the pitcher's attention. Just misses outside, the ball one. Very close pitch. Midwest Elite fans doing a little more umpiring than cheering. Fakes a bunt, pulls it back, but gets the call. It's low in the zone, but Blue's shown twice now that if you square a bunt, even when you pull it back, he's likely to call the strike. Swing and a miss. Ball in the dirt, but the batter's out. First out of the inning. One out. Connor Lynch to the plate. Ryland King still at first base. Landon Longsworth, your starting pitcher on deck. Low out of the zone for ball one. Tigers had a uh, run shortened first game of the series today, winning 11 to 1, hence less at bats than normal. Still mustered six hits. Very short order against the Dallas Patriots team they faced 10 a.m. on this same field. So Connor Lynch fouls that ball off the screen above first base dugout. Going to count to 1-1. Swing and a foul ball off the back screen. One ball, two strikes to Connor Lynch. One out, man on first. Ball in the dirt, gets a little bit away from the catcher, but he's able to block it, keep it in front of him, enough to keep Ryland King at first base. Bankston doing some coaching from third base, encouraging a little bit better lead to hold the secondary possibly a little longer, especially uh, when you see that ball in the dirt. So 2-2 two -two count to Connor Lynch. He's fooled on that one. Umpire liked it a lot more than the batter. Called third strike. Makes it two outs, man on first. Connor realized it was a curve, thought it curved out of the zone, checked his swing. Blue disagreed that he did not miss the zone. And it's a pop fly straight up. Looks like the pitcher and the catcher are both going to try and make a play on it. Diving play by the catcher. Miss Reeves ends up having to go about 50 feet to get that ball. Does that effectively and ends the second inning with no runs on one hit, no errors, one man left on base. We'll go to the top of the first, right? Or top of the third, right after this.
swinging a foul ball off the screen brings the count to 0-2. So Landon Longsworth, after a little bit of time in the dugout, comes out and immediately gets ahead on batter number one in the top of the third inning. Tries the curve ball outside. Takes a stumble on the mound. Ball just misses on the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Longsworth seems to be all right. Back into the windup. Challenges the batter up and high. 2-2 two -two count. Into the dirt for ball three. And once again, we're at the obligatory full count. Seems like uh, team elite, Mid Midwest elite has brought a full count to the uh, plate almost every time. And he misses the ball four. After being ahead of 0-2, four straight balls. End up with a runner at first base. No out. He's picking it up and appears to change so that it's now coming from home plate to the right field. Was coming in. Fifth straight ball brings a mound visit from Cole Solomon. See if he can get Landon Longsworth calmed down and hitting the zone. Solomon, an on the field manager coach who uh, calls most games, he's behind the plate as well. Swing and a miss for a strike. One on one to count to the second batter of the inning. Lead off walk has a man at first. No outs in the top of the third. No score. Tigers take on the Midwest Elite. Once again, a ball in the dirt, and this one gets away a little bit from Cole Solomon. Makes the throw down the field. Just misses getting the call at second base. Jake Carter's unable to apply a tag as the ball. Hits his glove as the runner is sliding into second base. So two balls, one strike to the batter now. No outs and a man at second. Swing and a foul ball off of the mask of the catcher. That'll make the count 2-2. Two -two. Tigers desperately need an out here. Can only uh, stress the uh, pitcher so much by putting all these runners in scoring position. To the plate with a swing and a foul ball again off the top of the catcher's club. Back to the screen. Still a 2 2 count. Ball's in from the dugout. Plate and a swing and a kind of a wave more than a swing. It's a miss. Strike three for your first out of the inning. So Longsworth helps himself out. Fooled that batter. Change up. Just kind of waved at it. Brings up number seven. And we were commenting it's a very large lineup. He's a Midwest Elite. Didn't bring any. Uh, Undergrown individuals. And he pegs him right in the solar plexus and he'll jog down to uh, first base, making sure to show his displeasure with that particular pitch. That'll bring him out and visit Cameron Bankston. I was pretty confident that after that rough second inning, Landon Longsworth would come out in the third and he settled down and pounded his own, and I'm sure Bankston was as well. As we said, Longsworth has had some outings where the first couple innings are rough and not finding his own. Usually works through it and uh, comes out throwing strikes. More often than not, those first couple innings don't do much damage. Just uh, works his way out of it as he was able to do in the first two of this. Now we've got runners at first and second, one out in the heart of the order for the Midwest Elite. Bankston wants to remind him of what he wants done. 
Mountain visit was effective last time. Hopefully it will be this time as well. Umpire signals one out. Gives the play ball sign. Longsworth looking in for the sign. Goes to the set and to the plate. And that mound visit has resulted in a ball off home plate. Here we go. Relax out there. Let's go. Solomon does a good job of blocking that one, keeping it in front of him, keeping the runners from advancing. That oh, I wish I could identify for you what Landon is not doing right. Uh, doesn't seem to be a matter of any type of mechanical issue, although he's, he's expressed some frustration with the... Uh, Well, hopefully you got a good eye on that. Three uh, Dallas Tigers eyeing the uh, pop fly between the first base, second base hole. None of the three of them really seem to be committed to taking it, but I think it was because Ryland King signaled early that he had it, although staggering back, he wouldn't know it necessarily. But he gloves it, makes a second out. Now we've got two outs in the inning, man on first and second. But uh, as I was saying, uh, Landon doesn't seem to be a fan of this particular... Uh, Mound. That's a rip in the left center. It's going all the way to the wall. That's going to plate two. We're going to have a stand-up triple. No, he pulls up short, falls down. The throw behind him is not in time. So he's got a recovering double, if you will. I think he could have been at third without much problem, but he got the stop sign. When he tried to stop, he fell down. So that was a rip in left center. Really no one had a chance to make that play. And even with decent speed at both uh, left center and great speed in center. Unable to run that ball down and uh, keep any runs from scoring. So Midwest Elite breaks the board. And his uh, early walks really uh, come to fruition for Midwest Elite as it's a 2 nothing ball game now. A swing and a miss, number 25. Hopefully that will be enough to break uh, Landon out of his slump and get him powering past these batters. 0-1 count. Two outs, man on second. Tigers now down 2-0. Just missed that low. One on one to count. Swinging a hard ground ball right at Connor Lynch. Comes up off his glove. Going to get away from the shortstop and allow the runner to score all the way from second. That's a hard hit shot right up the arm of Connor Lynch. Man goes to first. Another mound visit. I think we're going to see a pitching change here. Brandon Ernest will be coming back into the game, it appears. Brandon Ernest started and pitched three innings in the uh, earlier game today. We'll be back out to the mound. See if we can stop the bleeding here with a 3 0 lead. We'll be right back with you. We've got a pitching change mid inning here in the third inning. Brandon Ernest in in relief for Landon Longsworth. Two outs, man on first. And runner goes, and it's a hit and run situation. Time Manning on the ball, and it's a one pitch escape from the inning for Brandon Ernest. Not before the uh, Midwest lead take a 3-0 lead into the dugout. After two and a half innings, the Tigers coming up to bat, down 3-0. We'll be back in a moment. All right, here we are in the bottom of the third inning. Tigers down 3-0. Tate Trueblood leading off the inning for the Dallas Tigers. Takes a rip at one and fouls it hard off the, uh, over the left field uh, dugout. Excuse me, right field dugout. Swing and a high hopper down third base line. It's gone foul. That'll be a strike two. So it's an 0-2 count quickly on Tate Trueblood. And the Tigers gave up three runs in the top of the third. 
Then in Longsworth, uh, unable to get through the third inning. Brandon Ernest comes in, one pitch, fly ball to Ty Manning to end the inning. But Tate Trueblood back in the box now, looking down for the sign. 0-2 count. Curve ball, and he battles it off the end of the bat, but it's just a one-hopper, easy lofted ball to the second baseman. That'll be one out, bringing Brandon Ernest, your relief pitcher, up to bat. Brandon, your DH today will now be substituted into the lineup, and Len Longsworth will switch into the DH role. Low strike called. We haven't seen that ball called a strike yet today. And a swing and a foul ball deep down the right field line. It's going to be out of, no, it's not quite out of play, but the first baseman cannot make a play on it. Good attempt to get down that line. And once again, the Tiger batter is 0-2 on the count. You see the difference uh, in the two pitchers. One working ahead the entire game and a swing at a high curve ball. Swing and a miss for strike three. Brandon Ernest goes down. So, uh, pitchers pounding the zone, working ahead in the count, and it's uh, making for much shorter innings for him than it has been for the Tigers. Again, uh, gets the call. As we were talking about earlier innings, uh, in the opposite situation with Landon Longsworth. Guy's staying in and around the zone, so he's going to get those borderline calls. There's a cheap chopper to second base. Going to be an easy out, underhand toss to first base. And just like that, in eight pitches, the Tigers are out of the inning. Great shutdown inning for the Midwest Elite. We're going to need the uh, shutdown inning of our own here in the top of the fourth and then get back at the bats. We'll be right back. Ground ball, deep hopper to the hole. Easy throw by Chaz Peterson over to Ryland King, who pops off the bag for the first out of the inning. So Brandon Ernest immediately working ahead in that one. Gets the ground ball to the second or the shortstop and gets the first out. On the top of the fourth here, Tigers down 3 0. Diamond King World Series in North Texas for U17 showcase players. Mostly rising high school seniors. And a swing and a miss for strike one. And again, he's ahead on the batter. And another swing and a miss. 0 2 count. Brandon working quickly here. And Brandon Ernest was a starting pitcher this morning's game. That game got away from the Patriots very quickly with an eight-run top of the first by the Dallas Tigers. Looping fly ball, shortstop calling everybody off on it and makes the catch. So in about five pitches, Brandon Ernest has two outs in the second, in the top of the fifth, fourth inning. So Brandon Ernest only got three innings of work, and they were mild work at that. No stress at the beginning of the day, so he's being brought in to relieve here. In a game where the Tigers are down three, top of the fourth inning. Again, counting the zone, working ahead, working fast. Key attributes, especially in a relief situation. Takes something off of it, drops it down, but it's just a little low for ball one. One on one to count. So welcome to gate B21. Hope you're all enjoying the broadcast today from Hebron Hawks Field, Carrollton, Texas. And a swing, and it's a looper down the line. Ryland King makes the play, ranging back to the edge of the dirt. And just like that, the Tigers are back in the dugout. Shut down top of the fourth inning by Brandon Ernest, who's come in and faced four batters, recorded four outs, trying to get the Tigers back into this. Going to take some hits to do it as the Midwest Elite take the field for the bottom of the fourth inning. We'll stay with you. Press box here has been promoting quite a bit of uh, play from the uh, Alabama 
band, but switching it up and bringing it You can tell by the uh, on deck batter. Let's bring up the leadoff hitter, Ty Manning. Tigers need to get a lot more done this time through the order than they did the first time through the order. Not able to really mount anything. Although they had a little bit of action early in the first inning, weren't able to push anything across. Early in the second inning, excuse me. So Ty Manning up the bat. Singled hard into right center his first time up. Ball one high and outside. Called strike one. One on one's account. The swing and a foul tip caught by the catcher for strike two. One ball, two strikes. Midwest elite pitcher. Crafty pitcher. Pounds his own. Works it around and has decent movement on his fastball. Hasn't really been effective on the curveball. As you see there, Ty Manning easy to spoil. Been up and out of the zone. He hasn't gotten the curve called for a strike uh, very often. The batter's been helping him out, letting him get head in count, and sometimes swinging the bad pitches. There's one in the dirt, the discipline of Ty Manning showing there. Good job. Actually, he almost took that one in the leg. Lord knows he was trying. Ty Manning known to do anything it takes to get on. Takes the ball inside for ball three. That makes the count full. It was close, but that's definitely inside. Some of the fans who are not behind the plate trying to make that call from the side, which is problematic. Goes down low for ball four, and Ty Manning just gets on base. I don't know if he can just complete the rest of that phrase of just scoring. Tigers will get on the board. Last time we were in this situation in the leadoff of the first inning, Chaz Peterson hit into a Fielder's choice. Next batter struck out, and then the next batter, uh, or excuse me, the next batter flew out. And then the next batter, uh, not get to complete as at bat as Chaz Peterson was picked off trying to steal second. Pulls back the bunt. No call there. It's a good spot, but a little low. One on one the count. Chaz Peterson squares the bunt, and he does. Flinches on that one. Pitcher drops it. Bounces too far away from him. He went back on his heels there, thinking the catcher was still coming and might be able to make that play for him. Should have kept charging that ball after he bounced it off himself. But... It results in a man on first and a man at second. A few Glenn Peterson imitations going through the crowd. Chas Peterson squared a little late there, as you might uh, not normally do on a sack bunt, and then uh, leaned back to take something off of it. Didn't get a good break out of the box, but the pitcher, as he charged it, batted the ball about eight feet from himself, just almost to the dirt. Catcher... Gave up on the play, thinking the pitcher had it. Didn't come out of the box. Didn't make the play. Peterson easily reaches first. We'll have to wait for the score on that. But I'm imagining that's going to be an E1. And we get the confirmation of an E1. Tigers really don't care how they get on base, though. First and second, no outs. Cole Solomon up. 
He'll be batting from the left side of the plate. Cole Solomon, a switch hitting catcher and shortstop. And pursued by several uh, schools at this point, keeping his options open. Well, Tigers in business here. If Cole Solomon can do something special. Takes first pitch for a strike one. Here we go, four, here we go. Time Manning putting a lot of pressure on the pitcher from second base. No one really holding him. Jumps on that pitch, pulls it foul over the third base dugout. Puts himself in a hole 0-2. So we'll be looking to make contact here and get at least a productive out. One thing you don't want to do in this at bat is a strikeout, unproductive out, pop fly, something like that. Cole Solomon, usually a uh, solid contact hitter, and he does. He slaps it over the shortstop, Ty Manning dodges it. The throw to second is the only play, and then we'll have runners at the corner. Just Chaz Peterson does the job of sliding into second base, making sure that there's no turn. Really, the uh, ball was so deep in the zone, Ty Manning dodging it at the last second, doing his best to distract the shortstop without getting the call for interference. Kept anybody from uh, really thinking that there was going to be a double play there. Chaz Peterson finishes the job with a hard slide in the second. We see Pearson Monroe, the backup catcher, courtesy running for Cole Solomon, the current catcher in this situation. So Ryan King up with a man at first and third, one out. Only thing you don't want to do here is hit him double play. High ball one. Ryan King gets the sign. Pitcher gets the sign and goes to the set. Swing and a high, high, high foul ball. This should be out of play and it is. Fortunately, the Hebron Hawks just recently put in a batting cage and uh, that ate into the outfield. Otherwise, the third baseman would have had plenty of range to get over there and get that ball. But this one bounces right at the entrance of the batting cage. It was newly constructed in the last two years. Swing, and this one's going to get into the Texas League territory. Shortstop ranging, tries to make the catch, but can't quite get to it. Wisely, Pearson Monroe is well past halfway. Reads the ball well, gets to second base, and of course, Ty Manning scores easily from third. So Ryland King with the Texas League's bloop single over second base. Shortstop made an excellent attempt at it. Gets the Tigers on the board. RBI single. One run scored. One out. Men on first and second. Jay Carter at the plate. Not the kind of power swing you or uh, contact you expect out of your cleanup hitter, but it gets the job done nonetheless. Ball was just a little bit in on Ryland King. Got it off the throat of the bat, forced it up over the uh, second base, and just barely makes it into the grass outside the uh, outstretched arms of the uh, shortstop. Center fielder playing very deep and without the kind of range that Ty Manning has, was not able to get in on that ball at all. Swing and a foul tip caught by the catcher for strike one. Swing and a miss, strike two, 0-2 oh, two count. Pitcher really hitting his spots here, keeping the batters off balance, getting ahead. And here Cameron Banks and encouraging Jake Carter, needing a contact hit here. Slow curve ball, hit to the shortstop, he's charging, makes the flip to second base, who slides in and takes out the play. No chance at all to make the turn. So once again, we're at first and third, this time with two outs and Connor Lynch up to bat. Connor Lynch, a hot hand in the last few games, needs a clutch single here. Three to one, Midwest elite. Big run standing out there at third base. Make it a one run game with a single here. Takes ball one on the outside corner. 
fans somewhat behind the plate. Really thought it was a good pitch. Coach asking where it was. Blues telling him it just missed outside. Swing. He took a little bit off of that one, but Lynch decides late. Fouls that. Enough to get the uh, coach up off the bucket at, uh, down the uh, first baseline. So the count evens at one to Connor Lynch. One ball, one strike, two outs. Runners on the corners. Tigers down 3-1. Really need to push this second run across. High ball two. Well out of the zone there. Two balls and one strike. Curve doesn't catch the plate. That's well outside. 3-1 count. Walk would load the bases for the starting pitcher, Landon Longsworth. Comes to the plate, and it's a hard rip to right field, but it's right at the right fielder. He ranges, makes the snag, and the Tigers are back in the field. So it's one run. Tigers strand two, make the score three to one. Brandon Ernst will make his way back out to the mound. We'll be back with the top of the fifth inning in one moment. Leads him off with a strike in the bottom of the zone. Tries to take that uh, sidearm slider down low and entice a swing, but check swings held. One ball, one strike to start out the top of the fifth inning. Dallas Tigers down three to one. Need another quick uh, top of the inning here. Brandon Ernest comes at him, but just misses up. Probably a little inside. Two balls, one strike. Gets that slow curveball to break into the zone. And he gets one down in the dirt in a swing. Cole Solomon out range into the right. Rylan King takes the inside throw. Outside throw, excuse me. And that's one out to complete the strikeout. No defensive changes for the Tigers so far in this game. Rylan King remains at first base. Jake Carter at second. Chaz Peterson at short, and Connor Lynch at third, Tate Trueblood in right field, Ty Manning center, and Brenton McMahon in left field. Ball just didn't break quite enough. Batter ducked and gave up Will real early on that. Ball one inside. There's a squibbler down the, off of the batter, down the third baseline, but off the batter, foul ball. One and one to count. Blue will give him a little bit of time to walk this one off. Cole Solomon remains behind the plate. Only change defensively has been at the pitcher's mound. Brandon Ernest came in with two outs in the third inning. Got a one-pitch fly ball to Ty Manning in center field to end the inning. And an eight-pitch top of the fourth. Retiring all three batters quickly. Four-pitch strikeout to start the fifth inning. 1-1 one, one count and a high hopper to Connor Lynch over his head on the hop. And that ball will dribble into... Left field, batter run, rounds the bag, but unable to uh, reach second on that. Easy play for Brenton McMahon. So a weak single down third baseline. Not a whole lot that uh, Connor Lynch could have done on that other than either uh, get hops, grow, or really uh, maybe he could have bit on that early in charge. So it's, it's going to go down his base hit. One out single. Brandon Ernest gets the call in the outside corner on a breaking ball. Starts him off 0-1. Mild lead at first base. Not enough to draw throw, that's for sure. He's jumping around quite a bit, but he's only a step and a half off. 1-1 to count. Oh, the curveball. Number seven, for some reason, dodges that ball. Let's it go between his legs as he's diving out of the way. B gets behind in the count for the first time, 2-1. Number seven really ought to be down at first base, though. No excuse for not letting that ball hit you. He did everything in his power to dodge it. Curve ball at what looked like about 55 miles an hour. So 
Brandon Ernest toes the rubber. Double head shake. And a hard ground ball to third base should come up, and he bobbles the ball. Connor Lynch has no play. E4, and that's enough to bring Bankston out of the dugout. Just not the typical defense you're used to seeing out of the Dallas Tigers. That should have been the start of a double play, and instead it's two men on with one out. Connor Lynch will be the first one to tell you that he should have come up with that quickly, got that ball over to the second baseman, who could have turned it fairly easily. It wasn't like there was a lot of speed at the plate. And that's going to take uh, Brandon Ernest out of the game. Matt Natola coming in. Brandon didn't do anything wrong by any means. That uh, He's on a tight pitch count having started the game this morning. They don't want to have him out there throwing uh, too many pitches this afternoon. Probably really looked for him to get out of that one inning, but was able to do more than that. All right, man, it's all the toes of rubber. One out, man at first and second. Brandon Ernest was in at the top of the inning and uh, able to get an easy strikeout that uh, required a throw down to first. Um, second batter had a nice chopper over the third baseman's head. Good hit. Third batter should have hit into a double play, but our shortstop just bobbled the ball, couldn't make the play. Correction, third baseman bobbled the ball, couldn't make the play. And Tola starts him off with a strike. Working from the stretch. Checks the runner to the plate. And in the dirt, Cole Solomon, excellent stop there to keep the ball in front. One on one to count. And Tola, not quite the pace on the rubber that uh, Brandon Ernest has. Just outside. You can hear the Tigers fans like that one, but it's just outside as Blue uh, confirms to uh, Coach. Runners at first and second, one out. Tigers down three to one. Really should be out of this inning. Going to have to do some work. Pola staring in. Trying to control the play a little bit. Maybe intentionally getting the batter to call that timeout. Comes in with a called curve ball strike. Two. Two balls, two strikes. One out. Strikeout goes a long way here. Tiger shuffling pitchers quite a bit this, uh, this tournament. Five games in four days. Really six starting pitchers couple that uh, come in and can get some relief. It's a hard hit ball to time in. We're going to see it to play at the plate here, folks. Ball coming in on the throw. Just a little bit late getting there. Time in and got a great jump on the ball. Threw the ball hard, but it just lost a little velocity right at the end. And runner going the whole way. Able to score. No problem. Runner did stay at second. First and second. One out again. Now the score 4-1. to one. Midwest Elite. 
So with the five games in four days and pitching at a premium, the potential for two or three more games on Saturday before a potential chi championship game on Sunday, really got to conserve your pitching. Natola tries the pickoff move, overthrows the shortstop with uh, Ty Manning there to back up the play. No damage done. Total misses high. One ball, no strikes. And there's only one out. Runners at first and second. This one finds the zone. Evens the count at one. Total working a little bit faster there. Bankston uh, asking him to move the, move the pace up a little bit. Low misses the zone. Two balls, one strike, and the Tola right back up on the rubber. Ball off the plate to the screen will advance both runners. The Tola will come, come in and cover the dish. Nothing Solomon can do there. That ball hit the front edge of the plate and sky at about 20 feet up to the... Uh, Back of the screen. So runners at second and third now. One out. Three balls, one strike. Check swing, foul ball off the screen. Takes the count to full. Tigers looking to limit the damage here. Got infield up, and the play will be made at home, likely. Toll is still working out of the stretch, while the runner is not being held. And he comes hard, and he's got the pop fly ball that's going to find the right fielder. He loses it. Jake Carter makes a catch. Jake Carter calling it the whole way. Tate Trueblood lost it in right field in the sun. That ball was way up there. Honestly, the announcer couldn't tell if any of the three of them could see it. They're all moving to it. Would not have been surprised at all to see that ball hit the grass. Jake Carter at the last second makes a stab, though, and holds the runner. Score 4-1, two outs. Man at second and third, number 25 up at the plate. Matt Natola on the bump. Swinging a hard hit ball, this is going to be gone. It's out of the park quickly, folks. That's a three run homer over the 353 sign. And that's going to make your score Midwest Elite 7, Dallas Tigers 1. That one was going off the bat, folks. Turned on that hard. By the looks of it, that's not his first home run. So it's a deep hole the Tigers are in now. It's Matt Natola will be able to work from the windup as the bases are clean. Two outs. And there's another hard hit ball. This one's in the right center gap. Ty Manning ranges easily, snags the ball, and that'll end the top of the fifth inning. But not before a three-run homer pushes the score to seven to one. Midwest Elite. We'll be back with the bottom of the fifth in one moment. Bottom of six. Oh, okay. Okay, disregard our title. This is actually the bottom of the fifth inning. Tigers down 7-1 to after giving up a three-run homer with two outs in the uh, top of the fifth inning. Landon Longsworth at the plate. Two balls and two strikes to him. No outs in the inning. Hebron Hawks Field here in uh, Carrollton School District. It's 
Called third strike on Landon Longsworth. Sit him down. Bring up Tate Trueblood, the big cat, right fielder today. Trueblood got behind the count early in his first at bat, an 0-2, and then grounded out to second base. Tried to spoil a curveball and uh, flared it over to the second baseman. One or two hopper, fairly easy play. That curveball does no damage. Bounced through the uh, left-handed batter's box for ball one. Low fastball, gets Tate swinging late, fouls it off the back screen. One-on-one account. One out here in the bottom of the fifth. Tigers down seven to one. Midwest Elite have had runners in scoring position in almost every inning, with the exception of the uh, fourth, where Brandon Ernest was able to get through the inning in uh, eight pitches. Swing and a miss for the second strike, and takes the ball two to run the count to two two. throwing a little bit more confidence in the six-run lead. And there's a rocket right to the second baseman. Line drive out. Hard hit ball, but just happened to hit it right where somebody was. So that'll be the second out of the inning. Tigers looking to make something happen here with two outs. Relief pitcher Matt Natola to the plate. Brenton McMahon, McMahon on deck. Tola's got the gloves range. Pitcher coming in the plate. It's a swing, and it's a high fly ball. This looks like it should be played by the center fielder, and does range to make it fairly routine. Tigers go down one, two, three in the bottom of the fifth. And we'll see you for the top of the sixth. Tigers down seven to one. Welcome back to the Hebron Hawks ball field here in Carrollton, Texas. Matt Natola toes are over for the Dallas Tigers, who are down 7-1 to to the Midwest Elite. Top of the sixth inning. Starts them out, low and outside for ball one. Defensive alignment for the uh, Dallas Tigers has not changed the entire game. Brenton McMahon still in left field. Ty Manning in center, Tate Trublin in right field. Ryland King in first base. Jake Carter at second base, Chaz Peterson at shortstop, and Connor Lynch at third base. Cole Solomon remains behind the dish. This is our third pitcher of the game. Landon Longsworth started. Not able to quite close out the third inning. Brandon Ernest pitched one and a third. Matt Matola came in after a, an error, put two runners on when actually uh, Brandon Ernest pitched uh, one and two thirds, excuse me. Finished the third inning, got through the fourth, and Smart fashion on eight pitches, and then got one out in the fifth after an error. Natola came in to finish the inning, but unfortunately not before giving up four runs, including a three-run homer. And now he starts off the uh, top of the sixth inning with a walk. A couple of pickoff moves over to first base. Modest lead, no real danger of him stealing with a six run lead. Like Sinatola, start working a little faster and focus on the batter. 1 0 count. Comes in with a high fastball that's fouled up over the screen all the way into the uh, fan section. 1 1 to count. Another pickoff move over to first base. Rylan King applies a tag with runner easy, uh, easily back, diving in. Comes to the plate, and it's a swing and a foul ball back off the screen. Almost cleared the screen again, but this one will end up in the Tiger dugout. One ball, two strikes. No outs. Leadoff runner advanced on a walk to first base.
Long look in by Matt Natola. Now he comes to the set and rolls. High fastball, not able to get the batter to swing on that one. 2-2 two -two count. Fifth pitch misses up high. Takes the count to full. No outs here in the top of the sixth inning. That's a balk. He rolled through again. Thought he rolled through the uh, two pitches ago. A little upset at himself, I hope. Uh, because it was a good call. He's got to come to a full, complete stop. There's no specific time. Batter called time out there, and Blue gave it to him. Natola needs to shake this off. Full count still. No damage done. He comes and gets a swing and a miss. Strike three, batter's out. So that's your first out of the inning. Runner at second base. A little mound visit to uh, calm Natola down, who clearly was upset by that Bach call. Again, not sure if he's upset at himself or upset at the call itself. An emotional player. Pearson, or Cole Solomon, wants to make sure that he uh, doesn't let that emotion get him throwing balls. Probably a little bit of reminder from Chaz Peterson as he came in on that mound visit of what signals we're going to be using as we hold the runner, the pickoff moves. Toll it to the plate, and it's fouled off the screen. Getting ahead in the count, 0-1. That ball could be put right back into play as Blue's out of balls. Runner at second with a decent lead. Both middle infielders, fainting holding. Comes to the plate with a curved ball, misses low. One on one account. Again, Natola freezes the batter. Batter opts to call time, and Blue gives it to him. Comes to the plate, just misses with the curveball. Blue might have given up on that one. Two balls, one strike. Again, when everything's going smoothly and well, a lot of times pitchers will get calls that they uh, might not get when they're working slow or just had a box called on them, etc. There's a fly ball to Ty Manning. As my partner likes to say, we've got a man there. For most people, that uh, is not an easy out in center field, but... You put the ball in uh, the air anywhere close to center field, and Ty Manning's going to run it down, and he does. So that's two outs. Man on second. Tigers looking to get back in the dugout and get some hits. Manitola again with a long look in. We're going to get another timeout call by the batter here. No, he rolls through it, bounces one. Not enough to advance the runner as Cole Solomon does an excellent job blocking the plate, keeping the ball in front of him. Hard fastball low and inside for ball two. Very quickly behind on this batter. High fastball misses up. 3 0 count. Again, Matt Natola showing a little bit of emotion. Coming off the mound hard. Needs to channel that into some strikes. Now, there's one of them. Excellent pitch right in the meat of the zone. We'd like to see another one of those. Force the batter to put the ball in play. Three balls, one strike. Misses just high. Borderline pitch, but. Uh, Again, after uh, three balls, oftentimes that's not going to get called. 
So now we have runners at first and second. No damage done there. Puts a force at third base. Two outs. Tigers looking to get out of the inning. That pitch right there, high fastball, gets the call. Not more than an inch off of where the last pitch that was called. It's a ball. It's called. Curveball, fakes out the runner, dribbles it down to second base. Jake Carter makes the throw to Ryland King for the punch out, and the Tigers are out of the inning. So a lot of action, but no run score. Tigers will go to the bottom of the sixth, down 7-1. to one. Time for a Tiger rally. We'll be right back. Bottom of the order here is Brent McMahon takes the plate. One on one to count. No outs, bottom of the sixth. Dallas Tigers, U17, Bankston down seven to one to the Midwest Elite. Big damage done in the fourth inning. Correction, the top of the fifth inning. The, uh, RBI double and then a three run home run, pushing the lead to seven to one. Tigers need to get some action. Couple innings with base runners in scoring position, but one minute we'll get one in so far. Two two the count to Brenton McMahon, starting left fielder, batting in the ten hole. Swing and a miss, ball off the plate. He'll be running down and catcher throws to complete the strikeout. Throws inside and makes the play easily for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up the top of the order, Ty Manning, number two. Ty Manning, one for one, for, with a uh, hard hit ball at right center. Second at bat, walked. Scored the only run of the game for the uh, Dallas Tigers. Ball is up zone just slightly. For ball one. Gets the call there, unbelievably. Down and out. Really uh, what might be called a terrible call. Not even close. One on one to count. Again, way low. Blue wasn't going to call a strike there no matter what. Had to make up for the last one. Two balls, one strike. A hard hit ball down third base between third base and shortstop. Easily a single, and Ty Manning is on for the third time in the game. And three at bats. Excellent day at the plate by Ty Man. Here we go, Chaz. Chaz Peterson up. Chaz with a bunt single in the uh, second inning. He was attempting a sack bunt. It was a beautiful bunt. I was able to uh, actually. I'm sorry. It was uh, not a, an RB or not a uh, sacrifice. We scored as an error off the pitcher. It was a great bunt. But uh, got him on first, first and second, extended the inning. A little bit of a change up there down the middle, gets the strike call, one on one to count to Chaz. One out, Ty Manning at first, doing his best to distract the pitcher and be the nuisance that he often is on the base. Best lead of anybody we've seen so far today. Hard hit ball by Chaz Peterson, that makes the gap in left center. Ty Manning turning round in third, he'll score easily. Chaz Peterson being held at second. Ty Manning plated. Great double by Chaz Peterson to score Ty Manning. Great base running. And the lead's down to five. Bringing up Ryland King with one out. Correction, Cole Solomon to the plate. Already over on the other side of the plate. Chaz Peterson at second. Tigers looking to make some noise here. Low ball one. There's a strike on the outside corner. Not one you can drive, though. He'll take that. Chaz Peterson looks to take advantage of it. Back-to-back change-ups by this pitcher. Jumped all over it and ripped it into the left center uh, gap. 
for a stand-up double. Tough spot there for a batter. You really uh, can't do anything with that. If he sees that one again, he'll attempt to spoil it, but there's nothing you can do to drive that one there. So it's a 1-2 count to Cole Solomon. He spoils a beautiful pitch. Curve ball that probably would have caught the outside corner. Fouls it off to the left. He'll be looking for something closer into the zone that he can drive. Situation where you're trying to hit a mistake or spoil a good pitch. Soft curve ball. Hard ground ball to hard ground ball to the third baseman. Base running error by Chaz Peterson, who goes on the ball, runs right into the tag. So instead of having uh, runners at uh, first or uh, second base, we have runner at first base with two outs now. High ball one. Tigers down seven to two. Can't afford those base running errors at this time. Uh, it's not as if they wouldn't have gotten an out, but uh, would like to see that throw go across the field to first base and uh, possibly Chaz Peterson then advance to third on the throw. Right Got caught going way too far. Ryland King fouls this ball to the left. He evens the count at one one. Curveball misses low. Doesn't have a whole lot on that curveball. It uh, comes in, uh, looks to be 25, 30 miles an hour slower than his fastball. That's probably topping out at 85, 83 right now. He's a good, good pitcher, but um, doesn't fool very many batters, and the best are staying off of it and driving. Solomon, decent lead, and he's going. And it's a hit-and-run situation for Solomon around second, but hold there as Ryan King hits the ball right between the third baseman and the shortstop. Great piece of hitting there by Ryan King. So we've got runner in scoring position and an additional runner at first base for Jake Carter, batting from the left side of the plate with two outs. Need a big clutch hit here. Nice to get a pass ball beforehand, but quite honestly, this pitcher's been keeping the ball up. Haven't even seen very many balls in the dirt. Catcher's done an excellent job of uh, keeping the ball in front of him. Not sure we've seen a pass ball today. Tries to frame that one, but it's outside for ball one. That one comes in for strike one. Nobody holding the runner at second, Cole Solomon, gets a huge primary lead. Let's see if that gets any reaction at all from the pitcher. He's probably got 15 feet at this point. Down and out, just misses. It's two balls, one strike. Might see a double steal here. But with two outs, you don't ever want to take your uh, second out at third. There's really a good chance of him getting there. He's got a 15-foot lead. Third baseman's 15 feet behind the bag. Be a tough play to make. Two balls, two strikes. Jake Carter needs to clutch up here. And he fouls the ball up over the screen and out of foul territory, out of playing field. So still 2-2. Two -two. Runners were not advancing on that pitch. Comes in with a slow curveball, misses well up in the zone, up and out of the zone, excuse me. That'll bring the count to full. The runners will be advancing on the pitch here. As you heard Banks and Holler, make sure he goes to the plate. Cardinal sin for a runner here would be to be picked off. 
Hard hit ball, one hopper to the shortstop who comes up throwing to first base. Easy play for him. That'll end the uh, bottom of the sixth inning. Take us to the top of the seventh for the last inning of the game. Tigers do plate one, but leave two on base. Score seven to two after six. We'll be right back with the top of the sixth. Uh, correction, that's, uh, that's the ball game, folks. Really, we've been uh, called for a time limit here. So the ball game's over. Tigers go down 7-2. to two. Obligatory handshakes being made. We're back tomorrow at 12-15 from Mesquite High School for the uh, fourth pool game. Tigers' record now goes to 2-1 and one in pool play. We'll have to see on Friday whether or not that's going to be enough to get them into bracket play for the weekend.